Grade sevens, my name is Ms. Rona van der Merwe and I'm an art teacher. Today we are going to learn about still life art. Before you start learning about still life art, we are going to discuss the artist Paul Cezanne. He was born in 1839 and he died in 1906 and he was basically the father of Post-Impressionism. Post-Impressionism is a term used to describe the development of French art after Manet. Manet was born in 1832 and he died in 1883. Here is an example of one of his artworks, beautiful Impressionism artwork. The word post repeat after me, say post, means after. Post-impressionist painting came after impressionist painting. The post-impressionists developed impressionism but rejected its limitations. You are more than welcome to go and read more about post-impressionism on Facts for Kids. Read up about Paul Cezanne and about Manet, Paul Gauguin and Vincent van Gogh. Post-Impressionism artworks were characterized by the following aspects. The artist would use vivid colors, often thick application of paint, and real-life subject matter, for example, fruit, a fruit bowl, a vase, maybe material, or a bottle, real life objects basically but they were more inclined to emphasize meaning to stand out or what grabs your attention to emphasize geometric forms remember geometric forms are for example circles triangles squares rectangles etc and they this use distort form form expressive effect and use unnatural color bold, vivid colors. Paul Cezanne, 1839 to 1906. Cezanne was a revolutionary artist who inspired transitions between old and new forms of art. Even such artists as Picasso and Matisse claim him to be the father of us all, declaring him as a major influence of modern and impressionist art. Cezanne didn't always hold this acclaimed status as an artist. During his career, he was denied access to several major exhibitions, and his fame as a talented painter only began in the later years of his life. Cezanne grew up in southern France, which became the inspiration for several of his most famous paintings. During his time in Paris, Cezanne formed relationships with other post-impressionist painters such as Claude Monet and Camille Pizarro, who would greatly influence Cezanne's style. Pizarro, in particular, was a great inspiration to Cezanne. After studying with the famous painter, he began to transform his artistic technique using pure, vibrant colors, thick application of paint, and real-life subject matter. Cezanne became the forerunner of the movement we know today as post-impressionism. Cezanne loved painting the countryside of his home in southern France, and he became the inspiration for many young aspiring artists who would even travel from Paris simply to see him paint. In 1906, Cezanne came down with a case of pneumonia that eventually led to his death. Although Cezanne may not have been able to see his legacy, his unique style and techniques inspired many of the most famous paintings we know and love today. Look at the example in the background, a lovely still life artwork where you will see subject matter, for example, fruit, material, a bottle and a fruit bowl.
Now that you have learned more about artists who use the style still life art, I'm going to elaborate on the meaning of still life artworks. Have you ever seen a painting that looks like it's just a collection of things? Maybe it's a vase of flowers or a bowl of fruit on a table. Paintings like this are called a still life painting. The name comes from the fact that the objects shown in the paintings are things that are still in life. In other words, the objects depicted wouldn't be able to move on their own, or in some cases, they were living things that are now dead. Also, still life paintings don't typically focus on images of places or the outdoors. Originally, the name still life came from the Dutch word stilleven, which was used to describe still life paintings that showed flowers, fruit, table settings and similar items. And even though it sounds funny, when you're talking about more than one painting, you say still lives, not still lives. Still lives aren't a new type of painting. They've actually been around for thousands of years. Some still life paintings have been found in Egyptian tombs and in ruins from ancient Rome. Still life painting as well as other types of art became very popular during the Renaissance period of history, which started about 700 years ago. Still lives continue to be painted today. You are also going to make your own still life artwork this term. Even though a still life might look like a painting just showing a bunch of objects together, there's usually more to it than that. Artists select specific things to include in their still lives so that their paintings tell a story or show an idea. When you look at a still life painting, be sure to look at what objects the artist included and how the objects are arranged in the painting. Sometimes artists select particular things to paint because they have an in interesting shape, texture or colour. Artists who create still life paintings are trying to make us look at things we see every day in a new and different way. Types of still life paintings. There are usually four kinds of still lives. Flowers, non-living animals, food and symbolic paintings. In symbolic paintings, the items that are shown are meant to symbolize or stand for something else. Still Life with Irises, 1890 by Vincent van Gogh. Still Lives with Non-Living Animals. Still Lives with Food. Still Lives with Symbolic Meaning with a deeper meaning. It's so much fun to learn about still life artworks and the artists who painted in this style. Let's have a look at some awesome, beautiful still life artworks. Still life art activity, create in 2D. Look at the following example and analyze the art elements in this still life painting. Explore shape and line, texture and color. The artist used tints and shades. A tint is any color that is mixed with white and a shade is any color mixed with black. The artist made use of the effect of the complementary colors. These are colors that lie opposite each other on the color wheel. Look at the example. The color wheel, a diagram of all the basic colors. Here you'll see the complementary colors. They lie opposite each other on the color wheel. Now look at the tonal range of blue in the painting.
It will start with white where there is no color and goes to a very dark blue where the color has been mixed with black. You are going to make your own still life artwork. Take objects in your home, for example, flowers, a fruit bowl, a vase, material, or any other objects and arrange them very carefully to create a beautiful composition. Make your own still life painting using complementary colors, tints, and shades. Remember, a good painting make use of contrast in one way or another. Plan your painting using watercolor, coloring pencils, or pencil, graphite pencils. You may also use paints for this activity or anything that you find at home. It may be a charcoal sketch, it may be a graphite pencil sketch, you, you may use watercolor, any art medium, pastels, so it's up to you. Don't make it too hard for yourself. First, analyze the objects in front of you. Decide what type of shape it actually is. For example, a vase could be in the shape of a circle or maybe some objects may look like a square or a triangle. And then try and arrange everything on a rough draft. First, try and draw everything before you start your final artwork. Remember, when you create your own artwork, or if you analyze another artwork by another artist, remember to incorporate the art elements. Repeat that, say art elements. Remember, they are line, tone, shape, form, composition, space, color, that's the art elements. Remember to include that in your own artwork. Use them with thought. Make sure you plan a point of emphasis or a focal point. Remember, emphasis, if you create emphasis in an artwork, it must be an object that stands out or something that grabs the viewer's attention. Hello! Grab the viewer's attention. You will need the following things to complete this artwork. Use a blank paper, preferably A3 or A4 size, or you may use a canvas. You are going to need still life objects at your home. Art material, for example, pastels, coloring pencils, paint. You may use any medium of your choice. Then you'll need scrap paper to practice your ideas first. And then you'll need a lot of enthusiasm, creativity, and definitely an eye for detail and perspective. Enjoy and have fun. Consider the following criteria when you are making your artwork. Take note, this is only an example. Make sure you follow the directions. You understand um, new concepts. Make sure you use your own creativity and that you use good craftsmanship. Make sure you've got a good composition. Use your time wisely and use the correct art materials. Well done, grade sevens. Now you understand the meaning of a still life artwork and you've learned about the famous artist Paul Cezanne. Well done. Come on, go and start your artwork now.